Notre prochaine intervenante travaille à la croisée des sciences et de l'art. Issue d'un background neuroscientifique, Vera Daviv est professeure à l'Académie de musique et de danse à Jérusalem. Ses recherches portent sur la neuroesthétique, qui vise à l'étude des perceptions esthétiques de l'art par une approche scientifique, et plus précisément, la perception du mouvement de l'humain. Vered, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um, I'm going to talk to you for a few minutes about dance. I think it will be related uh, very naturally to both previous lectures, to both both previous talks about music and attention. And I would like to convince you, if I may, that we are not looking only through our eyes about movement, but also using our bodies. And this is very, very special for dance. Just before I start, I want to ask you, how many of you are taking dance classes, have been taking, are taking, How many of you saw dance performance once in their life at least? Okay, so this is the right audience. Dancers friendly. Okay, what we shall do is um, first of all have two minutes of looking at the most, most wonderful dancer, Sylvie Guillem, that you probably know, all of you. And just enjoy, and while, shall I just play it like this? Maybe a bit less light. You are lucky because she is French, she is Parisian. You are moved by the music, but also by her movement. She is doing Matt's X work the choreographer Matt Eck. So, going back from Sylvie Guillaume's magical movements, I want to show you, I want to share with you that looking at dance is not always, that looking at human movement is not always very simple. Not always one can follow the dancer jump or even me move along the stage because many times the dancer or the person or the animals are not really exposed completely fully in front of your eyes. Sometimes they are hiding behind something and appear in the other side, and our brain has to calculate movement, not to see the movement, but to calculate whether there was a movement by looking at a, an object at one time in one place and a next moment in the other place. Everybody knows that, but I would like to show you like this. You see a point, And maybe you see it now here. Did you see it moving? Maybe it's another point, came from nowhere else. But if I move them fast, do you see, whoops, do you see the, the, the point or the light moved? That's what you see when you are looking at a, at a, at a picture, at a, at a movie picture, for instance, or television. Anyway, our brain has a big challenge to compute and to understand how a, a thing is moving, an object is moving, while not really seeing it moving, but by seeing it appearing here and there. Is it the same movement, the same person, the same dots, or is it somebody else? So this is one, one point that I wanted to share with you. Looking at movement is complicated. 
can be complicated. The next point that I want to share with you is that we humans are really expert in understanding not only dots moving, but mostly biological movement, biological motion. And by that, I mean that you, we need only partial information in order to understand the whole story. I'll let you see it in a minute. Um, if we put on a dancer's body a few points of light, it looks like this. And then we ask, the, in this case, I'll show you a, a, a moving person, and I'll ask you, what do you see? Is it a male or a female, by the way? Male. What does he do? He's jumping, right. What does he do now? Climbing the stairs, going down, out. He is sitting on a chair, high chair. What does he do now? Okay. We understand so much, but what did we see? We saw only 13 spots of lights going together. We are so experts in understanding biological motion that by looking at lights, you can identify a male, a female, a tall, a short, maybe a specific person, if, if it would be Idan, I'm sure I would identify his. You can see his action. You can really understand a lot from few points. So this was another point that I wanted to make to convince you how expert and skillful we are at understanding uh, a human motion. Another point that I want you to realize, I'm sure you realize that, but I want you to focus on is the fact that we are always looking at movement and doing prediction. What will be the next move? When you see a car, of course, evolution has made us realize what will be her ne the car's next move. We have to realize what is the future in order to be able to run away from the car. When you see a dancer, if the dancer falls all of a sudden out of a jump, he falls, you are immediately surprised. You immediately feel, oh, what happened? Because you were expecting, you were predicting that he will land properly. And once he didn't, you are surprised. When you see a, a tennis court game, you always see the people going before even the ball to the other side because we know what to expect. We are not only looking at what happens, we are already simulating what will happen. That's how we see movement. So this is very sophisticated, very elaborated way of looking at movement. But the most important thing is what happens to us to our body, to our motor system, when we look at movement. And what I want to emphasize and to mention to you is the mirror neural systems, which is, was discovered <coughs> uh, 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 on the monkeys. And I want to tell you, we all have that, even though we are big monkeys. Um, I want to tell you the following. There is a group of neurons that when I do the movement and when I see you do the, the same movement, this very neuron responds. The neuron, the, the, the nerve cell that responds when the monkey moves his hand, the same one responds when the monkey is looking at another person or a monkey move his hand. So inevitably, when I see you move, when I see a certain movement done by you, my, my brain part, my motor brain part, that is usually active when I do the same movement, is really active. We are mirroring each other's movement. That means that inevitably, when I see somebody doing dancing, my brain is simulating the same dance, the same movement. 
I am activating my motor system even though I don't execute it. But I am actually activating my motor system. I don't see movement only with my eyes. I see movement also with my motor system and up to muscle level, muscle activity level. That means that we are all very much physically involved when looking at other people move. And that means, that leads us to a question, to what degree? Are we all sharing the same degree of identity or activating our muscles, our, our, our motor areas when we see somebody is jumping? And the answer is no. I'll give you two examples and wrap up. Um, when there is a ballet dancer doing ballet, and there is a capoeira, you know the, the you know capoeira, yes, the, the Brazilian movement type, a, a capoeira dancer doing capoeira. If a ballet dancer watches ballet movement, his brain activity is stronger than if he, the ballet dancer, watches capoeira. So that means that your previous experience is important. If you are a ballet dancer watching ballet, you are most likely to be more involved, more activated, more uh, um, evoked by, by this. The other information would come from different uh, experiment, taking it, it into even more details when a ballet dancer watches a movie, uh, watches a, his teacher, as a matter of fact, doing a, cert, a sequence, a dance sequence. Part of the dance, he really danced himself in his own body. And part of the same dance he didn't learn, he just saw the teacher continue. The, his brain, the brain of the observer would work much stronger when he see when he sees the, the practice, this is the extra activity of in his brain, where he see a movement, the sequence of movement that he really practiced in his own body versus the same dance continued in a, peer, in, in a part that he didn't really perform. All that means that we are experts in perception of motion in general. We are especially expert in the perception of human motion, as, as, I told, as I showed you with partial information and other prediction and all that. Our motor system simulates the movement. We, we see as if our body is really performing it, and <coughs> we respond, respond stronger to familiar movement or to movements, and more even to movement that we really saw and did it in our bodies. I think that everybody feels it. If you play football and you look at football game, you are more engaged than if you see something that you haven't done, even though your body tells you that. And what about empathy? Why do I say empathy? Because uh, mirror neurons that we showed uh, uh, on the monkey, and we have them too, <coughs> are considered to be the basic, the basis for social interaction, for understanding the other. If I'm mirroring you, if I'm, when I see you move, I simulate the same movement in my own body, it evokes the feelings that happens to me when I do the movement. So my, I, my ability to understand the other is via looking at him move, understanding his meaning, the meaning of his movement by simulating my own system and by identifying with what I see. And this is all what is dance about. That's what we do when we see dance. We see the other, we simulate it, 
and we simulate his movement, we understand his expression, and we share the same, or hopefully, something about the same strong feelings. So the, I just want to thank you for dancing with us from your chairs, and uh, hopefully we'll dance together. Thank you.